Uh, <coughs> for me, it is a um, wonderful occasion to be in front of you and to share with you God's word. I would like um, me to decrease and Jesus to increase. And let him talk and let him lift our spirit. Um, Michael read the introductory the Bible, the scripture verse. And um, may God bless the reading. May God bless the hearing of his holy word. And may God bless the reader of his holy word too. This is a humble beginning. And let God bless him to be the first step in his life towards God and towards his work. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, I would like to say a thank you very much for um, the Cape Cod Seventh-day Adventist Church board for each member of the board. And I would like to thank you for uh, Brother uh, Chuck Holtry, our pastor, a wonderful man, giving me this opportunity to be in front of you and to share with you God's word. Uh, I would like to mention uh, just one thought from my past. Last time, uh, when I spoke God's words in the Hungarian community, it was 2019, was in June. And uh, my last sermon in Hungarian language, the title of last sermon was God leads his faithful people. And I never thought in a million years that I'm going to have the next worship hour together in the, hung in, in the English speaking church and I'm going to speak in English. So please pray for me and I want to thank you for brother who prayed for me. He just, thank you very much. And um, <clears throat> With this uh, uh, introduction, I would like to mention one thing, and especially uh, when I had that sermon in the Hungarian community in New York in 2019, um, we sang my wife's preferred song, 537, He Leaded Me. And I can tell you that, that since then, every single moment of our life, I can assure you that God leaded us. And we cannot thank, thank more God's guidance and love towards us. With this introduction, would you please bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for being here and to listen to your words. Please send your Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts to understand, prepare our minds to answer, and let the whole congregation praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's sermon has the title, The Power of Praise. And we read the Bible verse from uh, Psalm, 100, Psalm chapter 103, verse 1 and 2, and I'm going to read to you the new version, the Living Translation. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Praise is an expression of approval and adoration. 
I was looking uh, the meaning of praise. I want to make sure that uh, we are understanding uh, the deepness of this word, praise. And in Webster Dictionary, I find that is the expression of approval and adoration. And when we praise, we glorify, we worship, we celebrate, we exalt, and we bless someone or something. The, pray, the word of the praise, for a better understanding, is a verb, is a command, is a do it, action, is not a theoretic one, is a practical, continuous process. Uh, let's see other uh, expressions, expressing admiration. The praise is paying tribute for something. Praise is speaking highly of somebody. Praise is a cheer. Praise is a compliment. Praise is a celebration of God's accomplishments towards us. Praise is a devotion. For a better understanding, I want to see the synonyms of praise. One, of the, one synonym of praise is commendation. The other one is laudation, approbation, eulogy, applause. Many times we let's give a round of applause to someone or to somebody who achieves something. Is a compliment. Praise is a worship. Last Sabbath, the pastor Chuck he had a wonderful, wonderful subject. Somebody remembers the subject, what he was talking? He was talking about Sabbath. He was talking about worthy of worship. Worthy of worship. Here we are. Worship is a glorification. Uh, understanding better the word of worship Let's see what is the antonyms. What are the antonyms of worship? And we can find this also in, a, in the a dictionary. Is a condemnation. Antonyms of praise is disapprobation, dispraise, and denunciation. Could you tell somebody... Uh, somebody can tell me whose characteristics they are these antonyms of praise? Satan's characteristics. Satan characteristics, condemnation, disapprobation, dispraise, denunciation. Let's put that question and let's ask that. How we can praise God? How we can do it? It's so wonderful when we are beginning our worship hour with a praise team. You get used to it already. For us, it's something new. In the Hungarian church, we had no such a team. We, are, we were very little church. But coming here and this church is lifts our spirit. I want to thank you, Brother Charlie, for your wonderful music, worship in music. And he filled up wonderfully. He lifted our spirit. He lifted our heart. He made us feel God's love and God's presence here in this sanctuary. So how do we praise God? How are we are doing that? A few uh, Bible verses. Uh, Psalm 134, verse 2, he say, the, the, tells us, praise him. In the sanctuary. Praise him here in the sanctuary. Bless the Lord. Why we came here? We want to express our gratitude. We want to express our thanks. We want to express our, our fullness of love towards God. In Psalm 147 verse 1, we learn that we can praise him with singing. The praise team, what is doing? 
praising with singing. I would like to ask you very honestly, how you feel when the praise team sings here? Amen. Can you see the praise team with a sad face? Or can you see the praise team smiling with happiness? It's such a wonderful thing. And this is what God deserves. In Hebrew, chapter 13, verse 15, we can see the praise with your words. You have a personal space. You have at home a personal worship space. Praise him in your own space, in, your, in between your four walls. Nobody can hear you, but praise him. Don't let your guard down, not even at home. On Psalm 149, verse 3, we are learning that we can praise him with instruments. With instruments. Uh, the Cape Cod Seventh Adventist Church is really blessed with members who can play instruments. And uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to praise Him with beautiful programs and giving glory to God through instruments. In Hebrew chapter 2, verse 12, we learn that we can praise Him in fellowship with the believers. That's why we are here. In fellowship with the believers. All of us, we can praise God. Praising is contagious. You realize that? It's contagious. Sometimes we come here and we, our heart is not very happy. But hearing the praise theme, hearing God's songs, where we are lifting God, is contagious. And we feel the same as our brothers and sisters. Let's see some common expressions of praise in English. Well done. The most, most common expression, well done. When we are using this and somebody is doing a good thing. Or other expression, congratulation. We are using for milestones and important achievements and events. Congratulation like passing an exam, or getting a new job, or having a baby, or getting married. We are congratulating. The other expression of praise is, good for you. Uh, or, um, good thinking. Or the other expression, even though I don't hear it very often, hats off. <laughs> hats off. Uh, for his or for her achievement. In other words, heads off, no comments. You did it perfectly. And this is what God is doing to us. Perfect job. Perfect attitude towards us. Uh, what does the praising God mean, uh, means? How we can praise in God? How we can get close to God with our praising. We praise Him because He is a awesome God. We praise Him because He is our God. How you would feel if God would not be yours? If you would know that somebody else has God's blessings, God's presence, but you don't. How you would feel? So we are praising God because He is our God. He is our personal God. Praising God shows our total dependence on Him. Praising God shows our total dependence on Him. You start to realize already how important it is to praise God in your personal life. Praising God because He is worthy to our trust. He is worthy. He is worthy of praise. And praising God is an act of gratitude, a total submission to Him. Praising God should be a continuous process. Rejoice always. In Acts chapter 16 and in verse 25, <clears throat> 
we can find Paul and Silas proclaiming God's gospel, and they are taken into the prison. Now, I have a question. Paul and Silas, as a Roman Empire citizens, what they would have done if they would not be God's children in the prison? They would try to sue the Roman Empire. They would try to take, oh, I'm going to take a good lawyer. How I get here? I am, a, I am an American citizen. How I get here in the prison for speaking and for saying God's gospel, that Jesus is alive, that Jesus was crucified for you and for me. And Paul and Silas in the prison, in chains, what they are doing right there? In Acts chapter 16, verse 25, we can read that they are praying and they are praising God in the most difficult circumstances of their lives. They are praising God. And let me ask you something. What was the consequences of this? What the God want to do for himself? He want to kill himself because he knew what will be the consequences of, of, of this situation. Maybe Paul and Silas, they left. Maybe they were taken out from the prison and he's going to pay with his own life. But what the guard, the prison guard is asking Paul and asking Silas, how I can be, can I be saved? How can I be saved? How can I be like you in the most difficult situation of your life? And you are still praising God. What was the secret of Paul's attitude and Silas's attitude? What was the secret of this? That in the good times, they were praising God, yes? What about in the difficult time? They were praising God. So if you praise God when you have happiness, when you have good things happening in your lives, when, when everything goes perfect, get in a habit to praise God. You know why? Because if you are not praising God when you are in a good times, when you are happy, you will not be able to praise God in the difficulties. Get in the habit. There is no one way to praise God. There is no only one way. We can praise God in the church. We can praise God at home. We can praise when we are walking, when we are jogging. In any and every circumstances of our lives, we can praise God. Even when we are working. Praising is like paying, uh, praying without ceasing. Praising is like praying without ceasing. Have you thought about praising God all the time? I'm going to use some uh, and few quotations from the spirit of prophecy. And one quotation is telling us in the following way. Our primary purpose in this world is to praise God. Primary purpose. We need to glorify God. And when we are doing that, we are fulfilling actually our primary purpose purpose as a human being. Fabulous. Something what maybe we never thought about it. We never thought praising God as a primary purpose in our life. Let me ask you what the angels, the angels they are doing, what the cherubims they are doing around God's throne, what they are doing 24-7 Praising God. And they never get tired of that. And in the presence of God, they are doing that. What about us? Who are far, who have difficulties, who need God every single second of our life. 
we should praise God all the time. The question is, when we praise, to whom we are directing our praise? This is the big question. As Christians, out of all the things on earth and in heaven, we should recognize God, our Creator and our Lord, and we should direct our praise to Him. He is the one who deserves our praise. We have infinite motives for praising God. One, we should praise God for His unending mercy. For his unending mercy, we should praise God. For his many, many spiritual blessings. For his kindness. For his love. For his salvation. Because he is good and his mercy is everlasting. Think about that deep, deep in your heart. His mercy is everlasting. For his protection in his troubled times of the pandemic for the for he is good and for his constant presence through his holy spirit in your heart and in my heart is not wonderful that we can have all the time jesus in our heart have you thought about that for a moment just to be out for him, from his presence out from his holy spirit's guidance where we would end up? What would happen in these pandemic times for us? But every day, our everyday experience is that too often our daily struggles or constant life demands and worries can cut out, can diminish the price towards God. Sometimes we may not feel like praising Him. This is the reality. Let's be honest with yourself. Or other times we will be struggling or we are weary or we just don't praise him. Literally, we don't praise him. Still other times we may feel as if God has let us down. So we decide that we are not going in front of his throne with our praising. Or sometimes it may feel as though he is far away. And does not really care about what is troubling us in our everyday life. Sometimes this is how we feel. The painful blows and losses in our life may have sent us spiraling down to the point where we neglect to praise him. We neglect to praise him. The power of grace. This is our sermon's title. Yes, is a power in grace. It's like a fuel in your car. You have a beautiful car. What that car can do without fuel? Can take you anywhere? It's just sitting without any usefulness. This is the Christian who doesn't have praising feeling, who doesn't praise God is a power, has a power praising God. Uh, a, very import, a very important uh, quotation from the, Holy, uh, from the Holy Spirit and from the Spirit of Prophecy is saying this. When we make a decision to fix our eyes on Jesus and give him praise daily, now just follow, no matter what stares us in the face, we will begin to see the struggles lose their, their grip over us. When we make a decision, when we make a decision to fix our eyes on Jesus. You see how important it is in our personal life to have a decision made every single day towards Jesus. There is power in acknowledgement that God is worthy of our worship and praise. As we praise close to him, our hearts become more in tune with our creator and with our king. Have you noted the first 
part of the sentence, as we press closer to him. It means that sometimes we are not close to God. It means that sometimes we are putting a barrier in between us and in between God. He's there, but we don't want him in our lives. And here, the spirit of prophecy is telling us, press close to him. And our hearts will be more in tune with our creator and with our king. We have the first slide, and uh, here are a few reasons why we should praise God. few reasons. And I noted eight reasons, and please allow me to work around these eight reasons to develop this idea, to see how and um, what are the reasons for a Christian who lives in 21st century to praise God. Praise gets the focus off of ourselves. This is the first slide. Praise gets the focus off of ourselves and directed back to God. Praise takes us back to God's presence. Sometimes we are egocentric. Sometimes we are focusing in ourselves. We are not focusing in God. Sometimes we are losing the sight of him in our lives. And as we can read in Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2, is telling us, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So, the psalm is teaching us that in every single trial, in every single difficult situation, we should praise God and we should ask, we should take off the focus from ourselves and we should direct it back to God and we will feel God's presence. We always end up being stressed and depressed when our focus is on everything but God. Praising God will take our focus off the things that are stressing us and help us focus on God alone. Instead of focusing on our problems, start praising God. By doing so, we will invite him to our situation. Being in the presence of God is the best thing that can happen to us. We will start and end our day on a good note, knowing that our help is not based in man, but in God alone. Let's just make a connection to the Sabbath school lesson, where we learn that Israel and Judah made pagan altar, altars on the hills and under the green trees of the mountains. And they were, they were serving the false gods of their enemies. And here we just read that we have to go to the mountains. The mountains and the hills is going to give us help in the time of need. And we got right away the answer, no. My help comes from God, comes from Lord who made heaven and earth. The second slide is, and the second reason for praising God, praise brings us to a place of humility and establishes our faith. You have the second slide. Praise brings us to a humility. On James chapter 4 verse 10, God is telling us, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. You need something more? You need something else in your struggle? Humble yourself, and he will lift you up. When our faith is weak, we find it hard to believe in the promises of God. But God 
knows God exactly follows our situation. And as a loving father who is always there, he is faithful to help us out. A very important quotation from the spirit of prophecy. He will not leave us alone. When you praise God, the Holy Spirit strengthens you in your inner being and establishes your faith. The more you praise God, the less problem becomes because God becomes bigger than your problems. Is not wonderful? You see your problem that is infinite, that, that, that you cannot see the end of it. You cannot see the light uh, at the end of the tunnel. Focus in God. And you will see that he is bigger than your problem. On this way, you are growing in humility. You are getting less and less important. It establishes a right relationship between you and God. Less of me and more of God. The third reason to bless God is praise causes the enemy to flee. In James chapter 4, verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Don't forget the first part of this verse, where is submit yourself. In the new translation, humble yourself in front of the God. And he will help you to flee and the devil for, uh, will free, uh, flee from you. Evil cannot stick around when we are praising God. That's why he will try anything and everything possible to stop you from praising God. He knows that the most powerful Christians are those who are praising God. The most powerful Christians. Brothers and sisters, you want to be powerful? You want to be powerful in your daily struggles? You want to be? Praise God. The most Powerful Christians are those who are praising God. King Jehoshaphat inquired from God when he, heard, when he heard that the enemies of Israel were coming to attack them. And God assured them of victory, even told them that they were not going to fight that battle. When the day of battle came, King jo uh, Jehoshaphat told his people to sing Praises to God. In the Second Chronicles chapter 20, we can read the whole story. We don't have time to read it. But the most amazing thing happened when they started praising. You know what happened? God set ambushes against their enemies. And the enemies were defeated without them fighting the battle. Just like God has promised them. is not wonderful? What God can do in front of a political situation, in this situation in which we are now, we don't have to fight. We don't have to worry. He is fighting for us. He is doing what we cannot and we will be never ever able to do. If we have faith in him and if we are praising him. The spirit of prophecy is telling in the following way. Do not fear when the enemy attacks you. Remember, the battle is not yours. It belongs to God. Stop trying to defeat the enemy with your own strength and with your own wise thinking. Start praising God, knowing that the battle was already won by Jesus at the cross. He is victorious, and he can do that victory in your life too. The fourth reason 
why we should praise God, and we are getting a little bit closer now to the reality. Praise leaves no room for complaint and negativity. In Psalm 103, verse 2 and 4, we can read, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forgot not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems you, your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. It is good to remember what he already has done for us. He already, know, he already knows what concerns us and take care of all that burdens us. I don't know about you, but I find the act of complaints is much easier, much closer to my house than, to my house than praising God. This is a reality. I have a problem, and I always complain. Why? Why me? Why did it happen to me? What I did? See, the complaining makes me feel good about myself. I try to find the reason. Sadly, it does not take my problems away. <laughs> complaining, the reason is still there. I will still have to face the challenges after I am done with complaining. When I complain, I open up doors for the enemy in my life. When I complain, I open doors for the enemy. I invite the enemy in my life, complaining. In fact, when I complain, Actually, I'm standing in agreement with the enemy. Powerful words. Quotation from the Holy Spirit. Quotation from the Spirit of Prophecy. When you promise, when you praise God, it will be hard for you to waste time complaining and being negative. When you praise God. It's not wonderful that we have this possibility to praise God all the time, without ceasing. You see how important is the praise in your life and in my life? It's not something but maybe you should do, maybe you should not, depends how you feel. Praising God is a continuous spiritual process in your life. It's continuous. The fifth reason why we should praise God. Praising opens the way for God's blessing over our lives. You want to be blessed? You want to be open that way for God's blessing to enter in your life? Praise God. Praise God. On Psalm 100, verse 4 and 5, we can read in the following way. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. As we come into the presence of our king, he will not hold back his goodness. As we come into the presence of of God. If you want to experience blessings after blessings in your life, make praise a habit. Make praise a habit. Get used to it. Feel in your heart that you have to because he loves you. Because he wants the best for you. God loves it when we put him first before anything. He loves it when we glorify his name, even when we have deep problems in our lives. Another quotation is telling us in the following way. When you spend time praising him, he opens up the flood gates of heaven and pours his blessings 
upon your life. It's not wonderful. When you spend time praising him, he opens up the floodgates of heaven. It could be that, we, that you have been asking God for something for a very long time. But it not manifested. Today, chose to praise God as he has already given to you that thing instead of going to him to complain. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught the disciples how they can pray and how they should pray and how their prayer has to start. Their prayer does not start with complaining. In Luke chapter 11, verse from 1 to 13, we can read that how Jesus started the Lord's Prayer. What he said, Our God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Praising, not complaining. Do not begin and end your prayers with complaints. Be intentional about praising God even praising God even when it hurts you. Be intentional. Focusing. Be constant on your spiritual life to praise God. He will come true for you. He will come true for you. You want to have this experience? The sixth reason why we should praise God, and this is the sixth uh, slide, praise invites his presence in our spirit, is refreshed and renewed. He strengthened us. And John chapter 14, uh, verse 17, we can read, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the word gives do I uh, give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You need other verse more direct from God to you? It's not wonderful that God is asking you, peace I leave with you. Let not your heart be troubled. We have many, many reasons our heart to be troubled. In this pandemic time, if we are looking around, we can see so many troubles around us. But Jesus is telling us, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in me and believe in my Father. He taught his disciples to let not their hearts be troubled. Imagine this. Just think about it for a second. Their leader was about to be crucified. He was going back to the Father after the resurrection. He was telling them not to be, not to be troubled. After then, they spent three and a half years directly next to him, hearing him every single day, having experiences, seeing the miracles, what he did, what he performed. And Jesus is telling them, not let your heart be troubled. Do not be troubled. Based on what Jesus told his disciples, we can conclude that we have the power, the strength of Jesus' peace over things that troubles our hearts. Through the inner peace of Jesus, thankfully, God has given us the privilege to spend time praising him. The spirit of prophecy, we can read, when we do that, we take charge of things that troubles our hearts. When you praise God, his peace strengthens your heart. I would like to ask you something. How powerful you are in your heart today? How you feel? How you came in this morning in, in, to, the, to be present in the church. You feel powerful or you feel weak? And if you feel weak, here is, here is what we should do. If we want to be strong in our hearts, let's give praise to him. Let everything 
be guided by him and through him. If I think that uh, we need now more than ever this inner peace in our heart. We need his peace. We need for him to fortify us. We need him to strengthen us. The seventh reason why we should praise God, praise paves the way for God's power to be, uh, to be displayed. In Psalm 116, verse 11, we can read, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So praising paves the way for God's power to be manifested. Most of us, we try to fight the enemy with our own strength. But we cannot defeat him because he was been in this world longer than us. The spirit of prophecy is telling us that Satan, he knows all the tricks that we can use, what he can use to pin us down. We need to rely on Jesus and he crucified for us to win against the enemy. How, we do that? How do we do that? Through praising God. When we praise God, you are telling him that I cannot, but you can. I don't have power, but you have. Praise will pave the way for his power to be displayed against your enemies. Is not wonderful? Let's make reference to Hezekiah. King Hezekiah and the battle with the Assyrians. Extreme minority against an extreme majority. And what King Hezekiah is doing? Praising and praying to God. And God led them how? God let them do absolutely nothing in this battle. And they won. Can you imagine if God sends one angel to cut 185,000 soldiers from the Assyrians? One angel. Can you imagine what power is around us? Can you imagine God's power? And he said that he wants to strengthen you. He wants to strengthen me. Just believe in him and praise him. The eighth reason, and we are getting to the last one, why we should pray, uh, praise God. And here it comes our personal uh, experience. Praise shared through our testimonies serves to encourage others. The spirit of prophecy is telling us that the most powerful and successful evangelistic sermon is your personal experience. The most powerful sermon is your personal experience. How God changed you. How God worked in your life. Encourages others that God intervenes and interferes to the deepest details on your personal life. This is our God. And this is what we are sharing, what we can share, our personal experience. As you may or not know, we as a family have a personal experience. Brother Charlie, he, he um, started to tell you about our experience, how we got here, uh, how God helped us to get here. And uh, God's intervention in our personal life, in our family's life, it is an undeniable experience. It's not coincidence. It ha didn't happen by mistake that we are here. God doesn't make mistakes. And what we can tell you that God interfered in our life in miracle in, in miracles ways. And uh, as I pray, you answered me, 
And as you encourage me by giving me strength, it's telling us in Psalm 138, verse 3. As soon as I pray, you answer me, and you encourage me. Yes, God encouraged us to come here. Brother Charlie, you start to say about our experience when we came here first, when we saw, when you saw us with Giza together, um, getting into the church, and you were ready right away to help us. And we are grateful for that. Uh, let, let me tell you about uh, our experience in three small steps. The first condition for us was the church. If we are going to find a church, a faithful church, a beautiful church where we can find at home, where we have loving members, sisters and brothers around us. This was our first condition. And we went to two different churches. And uh, we did not feel the divine approval. We did not feel good. And we said, we are going to try the third one. And we came here. And I can tell you that God was working through you, Charlie, through so many other members, feeling us home, feeling us at home, and, and feeling that here we are going to find what we are looking for. We're going to find God in this church, and we're going to find Jesus' love in this church. The second condition, it was the house. I will never forget Brother John and Brother Ray, Brother Charlie, who were asking us, where are you going to live? What are you going to do? You're going to look for a house. What will be the next step? And we said, well, we are looking and we are praying. And uh, they had, uh, through the prayer group, they had a direct involvement in this condition to be fulfilled. I would never forget the spiritual fervency of Brother John and Brother Ray uh, and the prayer group members putting our request on the list of priority on the first place. And they were praying. And I would never forget, and later we understood with our family, that on the same Sabbath, at the same time as they were praying, our real estate agents received the fax from the sellers signing the selling and purchasing contract. Not before and not after. Exactly when they were praying fervently for us. And later we understand how wonderfully God it works. What miracle he did. And he fulfilled our second condition to come here in Cape Cod. The third condition, it was the workplace. Where are we going to work? What are we going to do? And beautifully and miraculously, God helped us. And um, I would encourage you, if you have personal experience, share it with others. Because my experience is uplifting you. It shows that God can be your personal God. It shows that no matter who you are, no matter what little or big, minuscule or huge problem you have, God can be interfering and helping you directly. God is so amazing that is worth it to be praised. Today we are living on very uncertain times. Every one of us has been affected in one way or another by the virus. Perhaps you know someone who lost their job. Uh, maybe you are among those who lost homes or jobs. It may be that you contracted the virus and survived. Maybe you know someone who contracted the disease and did not survive. Troubling times. This is just one of many challenges people face every single day. But it's up to us to decide how we want to handle what comes our way. 
Praise, it is a choice. It's not something what God is forcing you. It is a choice. In your, in your life is your choice and in my life is my choice. Every day in our lives we have choices to make. We can choose to live our lives absorbed in worries and in stress. We can choose to ask God to help us to uh, take our uh, eyes off all that may be swirling around us. We can also choose to look at him, the one who holds it all together, the one who holds us in the palm of his hand. It's not a more direct Bible verse than when he's telling, I graved you in my palm. I know you. I know you by your name. You are mine. And this is what God is assuring us. We are his people. God desires our whole heart. He desires our praise. He longs for us to acknowledge the power of his presence in our lives and over our lives. He desires to bless us more than we could imagine. His spirit urges us onward, calling us closer and closer to him. In Psalm 150, and I would like to emphasize Psalm 150, and uh, this should be our everyday um, experience, our everyday pray, prayer to God. 150, praise the Lord, praise the Lord in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harps. Praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with stringed uh, instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding of cymbals. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So, why we should praise? Why we should praise? We should praise because he knows the end of the story. And what is the end of the story? Let's read it in Revelation chapter 21, from, where, from verse 1 to 4. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. It's not wonderful, dear brothers and sisters. To all who are hearing this message today, friends who may be just for the first time in this sanctuary, or maybe to all who are watching us through the internet or through the social media, take Jesus' words to heart. Remember, and never forget this, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again. This is our faith. This is our future. God is prepared, preparing a, a place for us. 
and I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. May God bless us, bless his holy word in each of us. And if we have chance, praise the Lord. In good times and in bad times, praise the Lord. In sickness and in health, praise the Lord. With or without a job, praise the Lord. Let everything has bread, praises God. Praise ye the God. Amen. Amen.